point out that there is a subcategory of this. It's not just songs that need oh, singing, and stories it's that stories need that need telling. Tell and I'm going to tell you a story that I read some time ago. As you can see, I am a Norseman. And I have learned all the stories of the old gods, of Thor, and of Odin, and of Loki, of course. Many <coughs> stories of Loki. But I'm not going to tell you any of the stories about them. I'm going to tell you a story about Thor's daughter. Yes, I know there are some of you who have looks of curiosity on your face. You've never heard that Thor had a daughter? Well, it's true. Yes, indeed. You see, Thor did not just have his two sons, Magni and Modi, who were nearly as strong as their father. Thor also had a daughter by the unlikely sounding name of Thrud. Yes, I know, it's not very pretty. But she was a sight to behold. She had the beauty and grace of any of the goddesses. But she also had the strength and power of a giantess. That's the best of both worlds. Strength and beauty. And there were many men who wished to court such a prize. But of course the intimidating factor is you get the girl and you get her father as your dad-in-law. <laughs> that's pretty intimidating, so men generally tended to shy away from courting Thrud. But there was one man who decided he was going to try. <coughs> His name was Alvis. And he had something working against him. For one thing, he was a dwarf. He was a dwarf of Svartaheim. And not only would... You'd think that this would be bad enough. But the dwarves of Svartaheim could never, ever venture into the sunlight. Otherwise, they would be turned instantly into stone. Well... How could Alvis even venture forth to Asgard to so much as say hello to Thrud, much less woo her? Not only did he have to deal with the sunlight, he had to deal with Thor. So he solved both problems by sneaking across by Ast in the dead of night, when all about were asleep. He crept as silently as a mouse into Asgard, all the way to Thor's great manor house, which has 500 rooms. Fortunately for Alvis, Thor slept on one side of the house and his daughter on the other. And Thor, he could sleep like a log after he'd been out fighting the ice giants. So Alvis sneaked through the house as quietly as he could until he came to the room of Thor's daughter, Thrud. And when he knocked on the door, it just so happened that she wasn't in bed yet. She was fixing her hair. And she was rather surprised to find a dwarf knocking on her door. But he quickly won her over with honeyed words. And rather soon, Thrud discovered that he was, he was not necessarily all that bad. He was quite charming and clever. He could tell her most magnificent stories and uh, jokes that would make even the stoniest person laugh. He would sneak in to Asgard each night after that, and they would talk and get to know one another a little more. Well, this went on for quite a long time, until eventually, Alvis felt now was the time. He had to ask Thrud to marry him. <coughs> and when he did, well, she was more than happy to accept, and the two of them fell into a passionate embrace. And it was just at this point that they heard clomp, clomp, clomp down the hallway, getting closer and closer, clomp, clomp, clomp. And then the door flung wide open. Thor hadn't been asleep that night. He'd been out late chasing trolls. He had arrived home extremely late that night, only to find his beloved, beautiful daughter in the throes of a passionate embrace with a dwarf. <laughs> well, Thor was not amused, but one look at, the, at his daughter's face was all he needed to tell him it would not be a good idea at this point in time to just pick up the dwarf and squish him into jelly. <laughs> that would probably not be proper, you see. Now, Thor is notorious for having a bad temper, but this time, reason took over. <laughs> 
So Thor simply stood there and he said, Little man, I would have no, I would have you tell me what your intentions are. Well, Albus, of course, immediately began bowing and scraping, O oh, noble and mighty Thor, I have been overcome by the beauty and the grace of your beloved daughter. We have talked many a time. I love her and wish for her to be my wife. Well, Thor was silent for a very, 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 rather uncomfortably long period of time after this. And eventually he said, I would have you know, little man, that the man that my daughter marries must be intelligent, clever, and witty. He must be the perfect bridegroom. I would have a test of your knowledge and wits. And Alva said, of course, almighty Thor, I would gladly do whatever you say if it will allow me to win the hand of my beloved. And now Thor began to test Albus. He began to ask him questions on mathematics, on the, the land, on farming, on all the strangest categories you would never have thought that Thor would even know the slightest thing about. And not just in one language. Thor began asking Albus questions on all the languages of the world. The questions went on for hours. But, Alvis was no dim dwarf. He was a learned one. Like I told you, he was charming and clever. And he answered Thor's questions one right after another. It seemed there wasn't a question that Thor could ask that Alvis could not answer. Eventually, Thor grew very tired and sat heavily back in a chair, and it was obvious he had no questions left to ask. Alvis broke out in a big grin. It seems that I have satisfied your curiosity regarding my intelligence, almighty Thor. And now, might I have the hand of my beloved? And as Alvis reached over to take Thrud's hand, he caught something out of the corner of his eye that he did not want to see. The sun was rising. In all his eagerness to prove his intelligence, Alvis had forgotten to keep track of the time. And Thor had been most devious. He had asked so many questions that eventually there would be no choice but the sun would have to rise. And before Albus could even blink, he was turned to stone. Which just goes to show that Albus may have been a very charming and intelligent dwarf, but when it came to wits, he was a little short. Ooh. Ooh.